Hello and welcome dear friends. This is Lit E City, the channel that always brings you selected material to help you in your exams related with English literature. Dear friends, today's video is from our series Major Indian Dramatists in which we discuss some great writers and their works that belong to the field of Indian drama, especially those writers who are who either wrote or their works have been translated into English. And in today's particular episode, we are going to talk about Mahesh Dattani. He is one of the most important names in not only in Indian literature, in Indian drama, but he is also a major writer on international canvas. So dear friends, let's start this very important video and with this background information, we will start that Mahesh Dattani is the most powerful dramatic voice in the present Indian English dramatic world. He, he, he is recognized not only as a thought-provoking writer whose plays always deal with some important uh, social problems, but he is also known for, for his experiments uh, regarding dramatic techniques. Dear friends, his, play, his plays externalize the problems of the subalterns. We all know how important, how keyword this subaltern is, uh, belonging to um, periphery, belonging to margin, all those issues, all those people who have been ignored. He takes up their cause, he explores lives of people like uh, categories like homosexuals, HIV positives, eunuchs and physically challenged people and giving their world a voice. He has greatly expanded new horizons in English, Indian English drama. He is thus a very, we can say, radical dramatist who has not uh, picked up the uh, already trodden paths, but rather always pick some new topic, new theme and new set of people uh, to talk with, talk about. Mahesh Dattani started his own theatre group named Playpen. This is important information regarding uh, the, the exams that this is the group created by him in 1984. Now, an important facet of his personality is that he is not only an acclaimed dramatist, he is also a reputed and accomplished actor, director, scriptwriter and a dance teacher also. So his experience and his basically expertise in all these fields, they help him uh, in designing his dramas also. If we talk about his works, we can uh, divide these particular uh, his writings into three parts stage plays which include obviously first play where there is will then dance like a man then we have tara then we have bravely for the queen final solutions on a muggy night in mumbai 30 days in September, the girl who touched the stars, brief candle, where did I leave my parda, the big fat city. So these are some of his stage plays, some of them are internationally acclaimed, they have been performed and produced across the globe and have collected him rave reviews. If we talk about radio plays, which is rather a, a newer genre, it includes Do the Needful, Seven Steps Around the Fire, The Swami and Winston, A Tale of a Mother Feeding Her Child, Clearing the Rubble, uh, Uma and the Fairy Queen. Queen. And last is the screenplays which he write for the uh, movie to be adopted in, adapt, adapted into the movies. We have three screenplays by him, Mango Safal, Morning Raga and Ek Alag Mausam. All these have been uh, transformed into movies. Actually, many of his other plays like uh, 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 the where there is a will and dance like a man these have also been adapted into movies but these are the original screen plays written by him let's talk about some of his plays and uh, the we will start with very first play he wrote that where there is a will it is a sort of comic play which marks the beginning of uh, the tani's literary career as a serious dramatist 
uh it is a basically a drawing room comedy where, which means that it uh, deals with urban people uh, dealing with problems related with money status reputation etc it deals with the mechanics of a middle class gujarati family in which patriarchal male head of the family tries to control his family even after his death and the um, uh, technique or the we can say the medium through which he uh controls the his family is his will hasmukh mehta who is the we can say the protagonist though he is dead in the beginning of the play but his ghost is always there he is a big businessman and is staunch believer of the patriarchal system he has kept his family under his control uh during his whole uh, lifetime now um now soon after his death the will is read and it sets forth a series of reaction and revelations charges and counter charges surprises and shocks protestation and acceptance so this is all what his family members can do they are shocked uh, by the we can say content of the will and the uh, last uh, they have to accept it though they are humiliated hasmukh in fact has formed a charitable trust Hasmukh Mehta Charitable Trust, and uh, he has donated all his property, including finances and shares, to the trust. And now, to rub more salt, he has made Kiran Javeri, Kiran Javeri, who uh, who is his mistress. He has made her the trustee of the trust. Now, his uh, all his. Uh, basically family members they have to depend upon this lady kiran javeri whom they have throughout the, the life of hasmukh mehta they have insulted and ignored but now hasmukh mehta has uh, done them a bolt <clears throat> Now, with the second play, Mahesh Dattani began to raise the voice of uh, subaltern, the people on the margin. For example, "Dance Like a Man." It revolves around the lives of Bharatnatyam dancers. They both are husband and wife, Jairaj Parik and his wife Ratna. Dear friends, uh, it basically uh, this particular play questions uh, the gender roles decided or pre-decided by the society, and how the one who tries to break this gender role, he is or she is castigated or very much we can put under pressure by the society and all cultural artifacts. Now Jairaj and Ratna, they live with their only daughter Lata, who is also an aspiring and promising young dancer. Her success on the stage creates tension and jealousy, and the dark secrets of the family relationships are revealed. Now the back story we comes to know about relationship between Jairaj and his father Amrit Lal. Dear friends, Amrit Lal, like a typical Indian father, can't tolerate his son growing long hair, wearing gaudy dresses, practicing dance all time. He is totally against uh, Jairaj picking dance as a passion and profession. Dance is something practiced by prostitutes, and it is unimaginable for a uh, Indian man uh, to pursue this even as a hobby. Leave behind the career. Now he does not like his daughter-in-law Ratna, who is also at that time an aspiring dancer. Ratna wants to learn particular uh, mudras from a Dev Dasi. but he comes to know about the ambition of ratna and he uses ratna as his collaborator as a, a co-conspirator assuring her that her career would be safe if his son is weaned away from dance so ratna is basically used as we can say a medium to put jairaj away from the stage now to safeguard her own interests uh, ratna also conspires with amrit lal and she gradually spoils chances for jairaj to become a successful dancer in fact initially both jairaj and uh, ratna they leave the home of their father went to their uncle but uh, they have to return back and now ratna she basically becomes a successful dancer but she spoils the chances of jairaj to become a dancer there is a very uh, we can say well known and very important uh, revealing dialogue 
a woman in a man's world is progressive but a man in a woman world is pathetic this is what jairaz has to say to his wife when he comes to know about uh, her mechanism lata their daughter takes dance as a pure art form uh, without any consideration for gender and she wants to pursue dance but it is not her life her desire was not blended with any force or we can say any irrational kind of thing for her marrying her, her beloved vishwas is also important and she wouldn't sacrifice her love for dance now the play ends with jairaz admission that they were only humans and lacked grace brilliance and magic to dance like god they just dance like men with their we can say imperfections with their jealousies with their all kind of uh, negative and positive uh, gray lives so it's a very important play and this this particular play put mahesh dattani on the uh, we can say forefront of those writers who talk about the marginals uh, or the subalterns ara produced in 1990 it was directed by dattani himself and first performed in bangalore as twinkle tara it is basically uh, uh, it was first performed uh, in 1990 and by his own group play pen uh, performing arts group different stara is it is basically once again a dramatic experiment conducted by uh, tatani his stage consisted of multi level sets the lowest level represents tara's uh, family home patel's house the next level represents bed sitter of older chandan who is now residing in a suburb of london and at the higher level dr thakkar dr thakkar remains seated in a chair like a god watching the human drama unfold so these three levels of set uh, they uh, they uh, make the dramatist uh, able to present three different uh, streams of time uh, uh, happening at the same simultaneously the play is presented as a flashback of dan which is adopted name by chandan when he reaches london to forget his past and live a fresh start though he is always haunted by the guilt and we are not uh, very much uh, the readers and the spectators uh, are always uh, kept in suspense what has happened in fact chandan and tara they both are conjoined twins and they must be separated for survival but the problem begins when it is recognized that it has been an unequal unfair operation why even though the doctors were aware that the third lag there were basically three lags it would suit to tara better than her brother they the doctors the family the mother and uh, their grandparent they took part in a conspiracy plotted by her family as a result chandan gets the second lag and tara becomes a cripple which is we can say a perfect example of discrimination we have in society bharti mother of tara is afraid that the world would not accept tara when she is a grown up as a handicap or a cripple and her concerns actually comes from the burden of guilt she possesses because it is because of this she wants to give her own kidney to tara though there is another donator available by thus contributing to the life of tara she wants to uh, mitigate her earlier uh, sin Bharti's father also played his role in this gender discrimination by leaving his property total property to Chandan even Tara's father who tries to show himself as a uh, supportive or we can say uh, very uh, forward looking man he when he comes to the it comes to the education his father prefers only Chandan and it is also noteworthy that discrimination against tara continues even after her death chandan has changed their story it ha uh, he has told this story from his own point of view he has made this whole tragedy he apologizes to tara for doing so
So, dear friends, uh, Mahesh Dattani very provocatively points out two kinds of, uh, we can say, uh, uh, margin, marginal people in this society. One is very rampant, uh, that is gender discrimination in the play. There is reference how in typical Gujarati family, when a girl is born, she is uh, drowned into water. But there is also, we can say, a very... Um, honest revelation of our attitude towards physically handicapped people and how society don't take them to be the normal or to be the part of the normal society. So it is one of the most popular and acclaimed and frequently um, frequently performed and produced play by Mahesh Dattani. Then we come to his next play, Bravely Fought the Queen produced in 1991. It was first performed in 1991 in Mumbai. It is basically uh, based on an affluent urban Indian family in which two brothers, Jitin and Nitin Trivedi, they are co-owners of an advertisement agency. They have married two sisters, Dolly and Alka respectively. Dear friend, it is one of the strategy of uh, the Tani that he begins all his play as if there is a very normal, as if there is, uh, we can say, an average Indian, typical Indian family. But as the play progresses, we come to know about the skeletons in the cupboard and there are many secrets revealed which show the characters in true light. As this play opens with Dolly, who is getting ready to go for a social outing with her husband. Soon, Lalitha, who is wife of Sridhar, who is an employee of the Trivedi brothers, she drops in to discuss about a ball for a party uh, in which they are going to launch a new product. The evening thus begins with a failed dinner party, then a fight between Dolly and Alka, the both sisters, and failed communication between characters. And soon it gravitates towards a revelation of personal histories, which once again bring to the front all kind of, uh, we can say, discrimination, exploitation, and once again, uh, subaltern issues. For example, Alka, we come to know that she is ill-treated by her husband, Nitin, who once drove her out of house. Ba, uh, who is mother of Nitin and Jitin, she also has been brutally beaten up by her husband when she was young. Her anger and frustration is now directed, which is a um, sort of misdirection uh, or anger displacement towards her daughters-in-law. Jitin, like his father, is also violent and drunkard. He is very violent with Dolly. He even once hit Dolly when she was fully pregnant and their daughter Daksha, Daksha was born invalid due to that. Ba and Dolly are the worst victims of the conventional and cruel attitudes of their husband. Alka's anguish and agony is aggravated when she comes to know that Nitin, her husband, has homosexual relationship with her own brother, Prakha. She has become the victim of her own brother. When she was unmarried, her brother basically was violent towards her. Now when she is married, Nitin is violent towards her. And Prakha and Nitin, they are in a homosexual relationship. Nitin in fact married her only to maintain his gay relationship. Eventually all men are unmasked. A revolutionary change in the character of Dolly, who emerges as an assertive and potent character, breaks through the silence at the end and bursts out her anger against all the ill treatment and injustice done to her. All the, we can say, uh, the hidden skeletons comes out, come out and we come to know about the violent history of the family. Okay, dear friends, this was all in the first installment of the plays by Mahesh Dattani. Mahesh Dattani is always, in fact, if you go through the previous year papers, you will find that he is one of the most frequently asked writer. So I suggest that you keep or you prepare about him thoroughly and sincerely. Okay, dear friends, thanks for your cooperation. Keep supporting. Keep watching.